Hi, this is Mark Zubak from Regal Rexnord. Principal engineer, been around about 43 years, all in bearing. Today, we want to discuss the installation of two fixed 6000 series Sherlock tapered adapter bearings. Tapered adapter bearings and their inherent nature when you're tightening them up have some type of axial or radial movement or, along the shaft. That movement has to be taken up either by an expansion unit or a spacer or some type of looseness in the bolts because if I don't take up that space that it's going to move along the shaft, what I will do is thrust load one bearing against the other. If I thrust load one bearing against the other, the problem is I could damage one bearing or I could overheat that bearing. I could get an early failure. I could even think the bearing's tight and it's not tight. So today we're going to go through that procedure. So Sherlock, very simply, is a tapered adapter unit. This is a sample here I've got. Tapered adapter with a nut. There's a spline in the bore. The slot goes over the spline. And this is on there. So what I have to do when I get the bearings out of the box is I have to kind of back this off as much as I can and just kind of put it on just snug enough where I can slide this bearing on the shaft easily. If I tighten this nut too much, I'm not going to be able to slide it on. Additionally, there are two, two set screws that are in the OD. I have to loosen those set screws. So I have to loosen these slightly in order to keep this nut to rotate. So those are the two things that I have to physically do. So we're going to start with this procedure. I have tightened this bearing up to the, up to the frame, which you would do for the first one. I've tightened this bearing up to the frame. Now what I want to do is go through the assembly procedure of how to do this first fixed tapered adapter 6000 series. I've got two, and remember, I have to take up for that axial movement. The other side I'm leaving loose. So the bolts over here are loose because I want this to be able, I want everything to be able to move when I'm tightening this thing up. So when I go to tighten this, this guy up, you have to look at the service instructions. There are two things that are very, very critical. Number one, number of rotations. How many rotations past zero do I have to get? And number two, how much of a spacer am I going to have to use in order to take up for that axial movement along that shaft? So in the service instructions, there are two numbers. One is, uh, this is a 1 in 15, 16, so it tells me I have to go 1 to 1 and a quarter turns past 0. I'll explain 0 in a second. The next thing is, how much of a spacer or how much movement along the shaft or, rate or axial positioning do I need? And it basically says a 16th of an inch. So I need 1 16th of an inch uh, spacer. So I have those spacers right here, measured out in 16th of an inch. So now what I need to do is I need to start the procedure. So what I need to do is hand tighten this nut. I've got it slid out of the shaft. I'm going to hand tighten this nut. I like to use a hook type spanner to get it snug. And when I say snug, this is just a matter of what I call finding zero position. So I'm going to kind of turn this nut with this hook type spanner. I'm not putting a lot of pressure, but you can see that the nut's still kind of turning. But then all of a sudden I reach a point where I call it the thud principle. Pretty technical term, but it's just the thud principle. This, without a lot of pressure, it's kind of stopped. I call that zero. Very easy to find on the 6000 series tapered adapter. The next thing I want to do is I want to mark that position. Because I told you from the service instructions that I need to go one to one and a quarter turns. Well, unless I mark it, how do I know if I go one to one and a quarter turns? So I'm going to mark. My position, I'm going to mark it a sleeve. I'm going to mark the nut so that I know where I am in relative position to where I was at zero. So I've got my zero position, good to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start tightening this nut. Now I've got the Sherlock Impact a wrench, which is an excellent tool to use, but you can also use a hammer and a drift if you'd like. I prefer to use this tool. So very simply, I'm going to slide this on, and with, you know, with force, I'm going to tighten this baby up. That was about a quarter of a turn. You can see that I've got the shaft locked into position. There's a half a turn. Three quarters of a turn.
One turn. So I'm just going to go the one turn. Pretty awesome. So now we've got this thing tightened up to our one turn. The next thing we have to do, and we have to make sure of this because it is kind of critical. These, there are two screws in the OD. Those screws cannot be over the slot in the adapter sleeve. If those screws are over the slot in the adapter sleeve, what will happen is the screw will just go all the way through and you won't be able to get it out and you won't be able to tighten it up. So if the screw is over the slot, you need to just tighten the nut a little bit further to get away from that slot. Once you're away from the slot, you're good to go. So once I get there, I'm going to look down my shaft. Nope, my screws are in perfect position. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two set screws. What the two set screw tightening is, is it locks that nut in place. In traditional tapered adapters, which maybe a lot of you might be familiar with, there might be a, a tanged washer that you've got to bend over the tang or some other similar designs. There might be a couple of screws you have to tighten. There is always some way that you tighten this thing up to keep it from backing off. Because if you don't do this, I don't care how tight you got that nut, it's going to come loose. So basically you want to bend these wrenches until they kind of yield. You get them tight enough. And we've got our first one done. Really, really simple install. Very, very robust. Now, I've got one unit completely locked. I've got this other fixed unit that I'm going to have to deal with. Now, Traditionally, a guy might go out there and install, I just tighten this one up to the bolts and do the same thing. You can't do that because if I, go to, if I tighten the mounting bolts up on this one and I go to tighten this nut up, what's going to happen is I'm going to thrust slow this bearing against this bearing. And when I do that, one of the bearings might overheat. The other thing that might happen, you may think you got it tight to the shaft and it's not tight to the shaft and it'll come loose, damage your shaft, damage the system, damage the conveyor pulley. Who knows what could happen? So following this procedure is extremely critical. So the first thing I want to do is, on these fixed unit, the other fixed unit is, for Sherlock, the movement is away from the structure. So since it's away from the structure, meaning this bearing's going to go this way, the first thing I want to do is I just want to kind of get these, this, this bearing up here flat because I want to get it to zero. So I've just kind of snug these bolts so that this flange face is, is sitting up against this surface. Not tight, but just enough to keep it from moving. And then I'm going to basically go through the same procedure I did with the other unit. I'm going to hand tighten. I'm going to use my hook type spanner. to where I get just that, just that amount of, you can see I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here, but all of a sudden, thud, it kind of stops. That's zero. I am going to take my marker. I'm going to mark this guy so I know how much I'm moving. Now, here, here's the tricky part. I've got this thing at zero, so nothing has moved. But now when I go to tighten this nut, it's going to move. So I have to allow for that physical movement along the shaft, and it's going to move away. So Sherlock 6000 series is unique. It moves away from the mounting structure as opposed to moving into the structure. So what I need to do is lo loosen up my mounting bolts so I have that amount of movement. Remember I told you from the service instructions that I needed about a sixteenth of an inch movement. So I have to at least have a sixteenth of an inch movement in these nuts and bolts. If I don't, I'm going to thrust load. So I've given myself enough movement. I've got it hand tight. Next thing would be to tighten it up that one turn. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this guy up. There's a quarter. There's a quarter. There's a quarter. And there's a quarter. With my one turn, 
I'm going to take a look down the shaft to make sure that those screws aren't aligned. They are not. So I am good to go. I'm going to tighten these screws up. You do want to make these tight. There is a torque spec, but all Allen keys, if you really kind of get them to where they're bent and they're close to yielding, you've got those screws tight enough. So now I've taken that into position. But this thing is still loose. But you can see there's a, there's a gap over here. That's what I'm going to take up with these. I said a sixteenth of an inch. I got one sixteenth U spacers. If you got U spacers, that's fine. You can use SIM stock. You can use whatever you want to space them. You just got to space every bolt. You can't just space one bolt. You got to space all bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on that bolt. Get that one under that one. May have to pry this just a little bit to get the last one in. So we'll pry this out a little bit. Get this last one in here. Get these bolts snug up against those spacers. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up, up against those spacers. Done. I have installed two. Rotates nice and smooth. I've spaced this out to make sure that I haven't thrust loaded one bearing against the other. I've taken the Sherlock 6000 series super easy on, super easy off tapered adapter, and I've utilized two fixed flange bearings. Uh, because a lot of times people, that's all they got is two fixed flange bearings. There is another solution. If you could get this flange bearing, which we can offer in an expansion unit, this shimming would not be required. But because expansion bearings sometimes cost a little bit more money, and plus now I've got two different bearings, mix, match, who knows? I got two bearings. Does the guy pick up the fixed bearing? Does he pick up the floating bearing? Does he know which one goes where? Well, if I've got two fixed units and I do this shimming process, you're going to do yourself a great deal of uh, no harm at all. You'll be able to install these, no thrust, you'll be good to go. So, I'd like to thank you today uh, from Regal Rexnord.